March 5th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Numbers chapters 5 and 6 from the Old Testament. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Command the Israelites to expel from the camp every leper, everyone who has a discharge, and whoever becomes defiled by a corpse. You must expel both men and women. You must put them outside the camp so that they will not defile their camps among which I live. So the Israelites did so and expelled them outside the camp. As the Lord had spoken to Moses, so the Israelites did. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Tell the Israelites when a man or a woman commits any sin that people commit, thereby breaking faith with the Lord, and that person is found guilty, then he must confess his sin that he has committed and must make full reparation, add one-fifth to it, and give it to whomever he wronged. But if the individual has no close relative to whom reparation can be made for the wrong, the reparation for the wrong must be paid to the Lord, for the priest, in addition to the ram of atonement by which atonement is made for him. Every offering of all the Israelites' holy things that they bring to the priest will be his. Every man's holy things will be his. Whatever any man gives the priest will be his. The Lord spoke to Moses. Speak to the Israelites and tell them, If any man's wife goes astray and behaves unfaithfully toward him, and a man has sexual relations with her, without her husband knowing it, and it is hidden that she has defiled herself, since there was no witness against her, nor was she caught, and if jealous feelings come over him and he becomes suspicious of his wife, when she is defiled, or if jealous feelings come over him and he becomes suspicious of his wife when she is not defiled, then the man must bring his wife to the priest, and he must bring the offering required for her, one-tenth of an ephah, a barley meal. He must not pour olive oil on it or put frankincense on it, because it is a grain offering of suspicion, a grain offering for remembering, for bringing iniquity to remembrance. Then the priest will bring her near and have her stand before the Lord. The priest will then take holy water in a pottery jar and take some of the dust that is on the floor of the tabernacle, and put it into the water. Then the priest will have the woman stand before the Lord, uncover the woman's head, and put the grain offering for remembering in her hands, which is the grain offering of suspicion. The priest will hold in his hand the bitter water that brings a curse. Then the priest will put the woman under oath and say to her, If no other man has had sexual relations with you, and if you have not gone astray and become defiled while under your husband's authority, May you be free from this bitter water that brings a curse. But if you have gone astray while under your husband's authority, and if you have defiled yourself and some man other than your husband has had sexual relations with you, then the priest will put the woman under oath of the curse and will say to her, The Lord make you an attested curse among your people. If the Lord makes your thigh fall away and your abdomen swell, and this water that causes a curse will go into your stomach and make your abdomen swell and your thigh rot. Then the woman must say, Amen, Amen. Then the priest will write these curses on a scroll and then scrape them off into the bitter water. He will make the woman drink the bitter water that brings a curse, and the water that brings a curse will enter her to produce bitterness. The priest will take the grain offering of suspicion from the woman's hand, Wave the grain offering before the Lord and bring it to the altar. Then the priest will take a handful of the grain offering as its memorial portion, burn it on the altar, and afterward make the woman drink the water. When he has made her drink the water, then, if she has defiled herself and behaved unfaithfully toward her husband, the water that brings a curse will enter her to produce bitterness. Her abdomen will swell, her thigh will fall away, and the woman will become a curse among her people. But if the woman has not defiled herself and is clean, then she will be free of ill effects and will be able to bear children. This is the law for cases of jealousy when a wife, while under her husband's authority, goes astray and defiles herself. Or when jealous feelings come over a man and he becomes suspicious of his wife, then he must have the woman stand before the Lord and the priest will carry out all this law upon her. Then the man will be free from iniquity, but that woman will bear the consequences of her iniquity. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and tell them, 
when either a man or a woman takes a special vow, to take a vow as a Nazarite, to separate himself to the Lord, he must separate himself from wine and strong drink. He must drink neither vinegar made from wine nor vinegar made from strong drink, nor may he drink any juice of grapes, nor eat fresh grapes or raisins. All the days of his separation he must not eat anything that is produced by the grapevine, from seed to skin. All the days of the vow of his separation no razor may be used on his head until the time is fulfilled for which he separated himself to the Lord. He will be holy, and he must let the locks of hair on his head grow long. All the days that he separates himself to the Lord, he must not contact a dead body. He must not defile himself even for his father or his mother or his brother or his sister if they die, because the separation for his God is on his head. All the days of his separation he must be holy to the Lord. If anyone dies very suddenly beside him and he defiles his consecrated head, then he must shave his head on the day of his purification. On the seventh day he must shave it. On the eighth day he is to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons to the priest to the entrance to the tent of meeting. Then the priest will offer one for a purification offering and the other as a burnt offering and make atonement for him because of his transgression in regard to the corpse. So he must consecrate his head on that day. He must rededicate to the Lord the days of his separation and bring a male lamb in its first year as a reparation offering. But the former days will not be counted because of his separation was defiled. Now this is the law of the Nazarite. When the days of his separation are fulfilled, he must be brought to the entrance of the tent of meeting, and he must present his offering to the Lord, one male lamb in its first year without blemish for a burnt offering, one ewe lamb in its first year without blemish for a purification offering, one ram without blemish for a peace offering, and a basket of bread made without yeast, cakes of fine flour mixed with olive oil, wafers made without yeast and smeared with olive oil, and their grain offering and their drink offerings. Then the priest must present all of these before the Lord and offer his purification offering and his burnt offering. Then he must offer the ram as a peace offering to the Lord with the basket of bread made without yeast. The priest must also offer his grain offering and his drink offering. Then the Nazarite must shave his consecrated head at the entrance to the tent of meeting and must take the hair from his consecrated head and put it on the fire where the peace offering is burning. And the priest must take the boiled shoulder of the ram, one cake made without yeast from the basket, and one wafer made without yeast, and put them on the hands of the Nazarite after he has shaved his consecrated head. Then the priest must wave them as a wave offering before the Lord. It is a holy portion for the priest together with the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the raised offering. After this, the Nazarite may drink wine. This is the law of the Nazarite who vows to the Lord his offering according to his separation, as well as whatever else he can provide. Thus he must fulfill his vow that he makes according to the law of his separation. The Lord spoke to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, this is the way you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Oh God, how I love listening to that last part. I grew up in a church where the pastor would offer this up as a goodbye to us when we left the church on Sunday. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his favor upon you and give you peace was what he actually said. I know the words we talk, we spoke just a few minutes ago were a little bit different but it just brings me so much joy and so much comfort you can almost tell I'm smiling when I'm reading it God I just love that this is in here and this blessing that is meant for the Israelites that Moses handed to Aaron to speak to the Israelites on a daily basis and now we have your son Jesus 
who is fulfilling this incredible blessing for us on a daily basis now as well. So God, I just want to thank you for this blessing. First and foremost, that you bless us and that you protect us. I thank you so much for the incredible blessings that you have given us. Not just keeping us day in and day out, but the incredible blessing of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for protecting us, for keeping us. I am a very cherished daughter of the King, and I can feel that. Your amazing love just rains down on me every day. Thank you for turning your face to shine upon us. God, I know you are a sovereign God that is so big that we can't even comprehend it. Yet you turn your face, your glorious face to us with excitement, with interest, with joy. And you are gracious to us. Your grace that you have brought into our life is a huge blessing. When I explain to people what, what it's like to be a Christian and I go through, <laughs> through all of the stories and the words and the testimony, but there is always the word peace that comes from that, from that grace that you give us. My life can be in full turmoil, but there's this amazing peace from that grace. Thank you for lifting up your countenance upon us. How amazing to have a father that shows so much interest in us, who's in charge of the entire universe and yet loves me so much to answer my prayers so specifically that I know that I had a conversation with the God and he heard me. How amazing that you can see blessings he's put in your life and you know he put those into your life specifically as a gift from him to you. You received a gift from God. So God, thank you for your countenance and for giving us that peace. God, thank you for these beautiful words that even though the God of the Old Testament and the fire and the brimstone God you are still the God of love and the God of caring and the God of consideration, the God of peace, the God of patience, the God of grace, the God of mercy. You have blessed us more than we ever, ever could deserve. Thank you so much for all that you give us. You are truly amazing. And I am truly blessed to be your child. In your son's name we pray. Amen.